squash and squash and sh <laughs> oh my god try saying that five times fast now squash and stretch is exactly what it sounds like depending on the situation we are either going to compress our object or pull it the result is a lot of flexibility in our animations so basically squash and stretch can make things more dynamic and communicate things like weight and what material our object is made out of the key thing here is knowing when to use it and more importantly when not to use it more cartoony animation styles really push squash and stretch while a more realistic style may not use any at all so let's go back to our bouncing ball we already applied the ease in and ease out principles but the ball still doesn't look very bouncy so let's add some squash and stretch as the ball picks up speed we're going to start stretching it now it's important to remember we have to keep our volumes the same so when we pull the ball down we also have to bring in the sides a little bit so the overall volume doesn't get bigger or smaller. The next frame, the ball is picking up more speed, so we're gonna stretch it even more. We can turn on our onion skin so we can see. We pull the ball down and we bring the sides in. Stepping forward, our ball is at the fastest point on this frame, so we're gonna stretch it quite a bit more. Make sure we keep our volumes consistent. Okay, nice. When it hits the floor, we're going to compress the ball under the impact. We want our ball to be bouncy, so we're gonna squash it quite a bit. The same principles apply here. We not only wanna squish the ball, but we also have to bring out the sides as well. Nice. On the way up, the ball is picking up speed, so we're gonna stretch it again, just like we did on the way down. Our ball isn't going as fast, so we don't need to stretch it as much. We'll grab one end, move it in slightly, as the ball picks up a little more speed, we're going to stretch it slightly more. And now the ball's slowing down, so we're not going to stretch it as much. Until finally, it returns back to its original shape. And there we go. When we play this back, we should have a nice, bouncy ball. So now let's take a look at our second example. Remember, we wanted this ball to feel heavier, so we don't have to add as much squash and stretch. As the ball accelerates, we're gonna stretch it, but not as much. We'll move the bottom down, and we'll move the sides in slightly. The ball is still speeding up, so we're gonna stretch it a little bit more. As we get to our impact frame, we're barely gonna squash the ball at all. We'll bring it slightly down and slightly out. Let's play it and test out our animation. Here, the squash and stretch is so subtle, we feel it more than we see it. So our ball still feels heavy, but the squash and stretch adds another layer to our animation. A face is surprisingly squishy, and we can get some cool results even if we're going for realistic animation. So here, as our character anticipates down, we close the eyes and squish the face for a few frames. Then we stretch him up on the surprised expression before we settle him back to his original shape. This really helps loosen up this expression and make things more interesting. Let's take a look at full speed. Perfect, that looks great. Now let's have a look of how we can squash and stretch a full character. Here, as the character falls to the ground, his body stretches out. You'll notice that his feet and arms are reaching in opposite directions. Then when he hits the ground, we squash him into this pose. His elbows flare out and his knees are bent. This is a great contrast from this pose and it makes the landing feel nice and smooth. Then he stretches as he takes off again. So now we're starting to see how we can use the limbs to squash and stretch a whole body. And these principles are the exact same as the bouncing ball. It's just a more complex character.